Analytical Chemistry 2.0 by David Harvey. Chapter 3. Section 3D. Selecting an analytical method. A method is the application of a technique to a specific analyte in a specific matrix. We can develop an analytical method for determining the concentration of lead in drinking water using any of the techniques mentioned in the previous section. A gravimetric method, for example, might precipitate the lead as PBSO4 or PBCRO4 and use the precipitatus mass as the analytical signal. Lead forms several soluble complexes, which we can use to design a complexation titrometric method, as shown in figure 3.2. We can use graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopy to determine the concentration of lead in drinking water. Finally, the availability of multiple oxidation states, PB0, PB2+, PB4+, makes electrochemical methods feasible. The requirements of the analysis determine the best method. In choosing a method, consideration is given to some or all the following design criteria. Accuracy, precision, sensitivity, selectivity, robustness ruggedness, scale of operation, analysis time, availability of equipment, and cost. Section 3D.1 Accuracy Accuracy is how closely the result of an experiment agrees with the true or expected result. We can express accuracy as an absolute error, E. E is equal to the obtained result minus the expected result or is a percentage relative error. Percentage relative error is equal to the obtained result, minus the expected result, over the expected result, multiplied by 100. A method S accuracy depends on many things, including the signal S source, the value of Ka in equation 3.1 or equation 3.2, and the ease of handling samples without loss or contamination. In general, methods relying on total analysis techniques, such as gravimetry and titrimetry, produce results of higher accuracy, because we can measure mass and volume with high accuracy, and because the value of Ka is known exactly through stoichiometry. Section 3D.2 Precision When a sample is analyzed several times, the individual results are rarely the same. Instead, the results are randomly scattered. Precision is a measure of this variability. The closer the agreement between individual analyzers, the more precise the results. For example, in determining the concentration of K plus in serum, the results shown in figure 3.4a are more precise than those in figure 3.4b. It is important to understand that precision does not imply accuracy. That the data in figure 3.4a are more precise does not mean that the first set of results is more accurate. In fact, neither set of results may be accurate. A method S precision depends on several factors including the uncertainty in measuring the signal and the ease of handling samples reproducibly. In most cases we can measure the signal for a total analysis method with a higher precision than the corresponding signal for a concentration method. Precision is covered in more detail in Chapter 4. Section 3D.3 .3. Sensitivity The ability to demonstrate that two samples have different amounts of analyte is an essential part of many analyses. A method S sensitivity is a measure of its ability to establish that such differences are significant. Sensitivity is often confused with a method S detection limit, which is the smallest amount of analyte that we can determine with confidence. Sensitivity is equivalent to the proportionality constant, Ka, in equation 3.1 and equation 3.2. If delta S A is the smallest difference, that we can measure between two signals, then the smallest detectable difference in the absolute amount or relative amount of analyte is delta Ren A is equal to delta Ren A over Ka or delta Ca is equal to delta Ren A over Ka. Suppose, for example, that our analytical signal is a measurement of mass using a balance whose smallest detectable increment is plus or minus 0 0.0001 grams. If our method S sensitivity is 0 0.200, then our method can conceivably detect a difference in mass of as little as delta Ren A is equal to plus or minus 0 0.0001 grams over 0 0.200, which is equal to plus or minus 0 0.0005 grams. For two methods with the same delta Ren A, the method with the greater sensitivity 
the larger K.A. is better able to discriminate between smaller amounts of analyte. Section 3D.4 Specificity and Selectivity An analytical method is specific if its signal depends only on the analyte. Although specificity is the ideal, few analytical methods are completely free from the influence of interfering species. When an interferent contributes to the signal, we expand equation 3.1 and equation 3.2 to include its contribution to the sample as signal, as sample, as sample is equal to SA plus SI, which is equal to KA times NA plus KI times NA, and as sample is equal to SA plus SI, which is equal to KA times CA plus KI times CI, where SI is the interferent S contribution to the signal, KI is the interferent S sensitivity, and NI and CI are the moles, or grams, and concentration of the interferent in the sample. Selectivity is a measure of a method S freedom from interferences. The selectivity of a method for the interferent relative to the analyte is defined by a selectivity coefficient, K, A, I, K, A, I is equal to K, I, over K, A, which may be positive or negative depending on the sign of K, R, and K, A. The selectivity coefficient is greater than plus 1 or less than minus 1. When the method is more selective for the interferent than for the analyte, determining the selectivity coefficient S value is easy. If we already know the values for K, A, and K, I, as shown by example 3.1, we also can determine K. A, I by measuring S sample in the presence of and in the absence of the interferent. The selectivity coefficient provides us with a useful way to evaluate an interferent S potential effect on an analysis. Solving equation 3.5 for KI, KI is equal to K, A, I, times K, A, substituting in equation 3.3 and equation 3.4, and simplifying gives S sample is equal to K, A, multiplied by Na plus K A I times N I and a sample is equal to K A multiplied by C A plus K A I times C I. An interferent will not pose a problem as long as the term K A I times N I in equation 3.7 is significantly smaller than N A or if K A I times C I in equation 3.8 is significantly smaller than CA. When a method S signal is the result of a chemical reaction, for example, when the signal is the mass of a precipitate, there is a good chance that the method is not very selective and that it is susceptible to interferences. Problems with selectivity also are more likely when the analyte is present at a very low concentration. Section 3D.5 Robustness and Ruggedness for a method to be useful, it must provide reliable results. Unfortunately, methods are subject to a variety of chemical and physical interferences that contribute uncertainty to the analysis. When a method is relatively free from chemical interferences, we can use it on many analytes and a wide variety of sample matrices. Such methods are considered robust. Random variations in experimental conditions also introduces uncertainty. If a method S sensitivity, K, is too dependent on experimental conditions, such as temperature, acidity, or a action time, then a slight change in any of these conditions may give a significantly different result. A rugged method is relatively insensitive to changes in experimental conditions. Section 3D.6 Scale of Operation Another way to narrow the choice of methods is to consider three potential limitations. The amount of sample available for the analysis, the expected concentration of analyte in the samples, and the minimum amount of analyte that produces a measurable signal. Collectively, these limitations define the analytical method S scale of operations. We can display the scale of operations graphically, figure 3.5, by plotting the sample S size on the X axis and the analyte S concentration on the Y axis. For convenience, we divide samples into macro greater than 0.1 grams, meso, between 10 and 100 milligrams, micro, between 0.1 and 10 milligrams, and ultra micro, less than 0.1 milligrams, sizes, and we divide analytes into major, greater than 1% by weight, minor, 
between 0.01 and 1% by weight, trace between 10 to the minus 7 and 0.01% by weight, and ultra trace less than 10 to the minus 7% by weight, components. The analyte S concentration and the sample S size provide a characteristic description for an analysis. For example, in a microtrace analysis the sample weighs between 0.1 and 10 mg and contains a concentration of analyte between 10 to the minus 2 and 10 to the minus 7% by weight. Diagonal lines connecting the axis show combinations of sample size and analyte concentration containing the same mass of analyte as shown in figure 3.5. For example, a 1 gram sample that is 1% by weight analyte has the same amount of analyte, 10 mg, as a 100 mg sample that is 10% by weight analyte, or a 10 mg sample that is 100% by weight analyte. We can use figure 3.5 to establish limits for analytical methods. If a method S minimum detectable signal is equivalent to 10 mg of analyte, then it is best suited to a major analyte in a macro or meso sample. Extending the method to an analyte with a concentration of 0.1% by weight requires a sample of 10 grams, which is rarely practical due to the complications of carrying such a large amount of material through the analysis. On the other hand, small samples containing trace amounts of analyte place significant restrictions on an analysis. For example, 1 mg sample with an analyte present at 10 to the minus 4% by weight contains just 1 nanogram of analyte. If we can isolate the analyte in one milliliter of solution, then we need an analytical method that can reliably detect it at a concentration of one nanogram per milliliter. Section 3D.7 Equipment, Time, and Cost Finally, we can compare analytical methods with respect to equipment needs, the time to complete an analysis, and the cost per sample. Methods relying on instrumentation are equipment intensive and may require significant operator trading. For example, the graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopic method for determining lead in water requires a significant capital investment in the instrument and an experienced operator to obtain reliable results. Other methods, such as deterimetry, require less expensive equipment and less trading. The time to complete an analysis for one sample is often fairly similar from method to method. This is somewhat misleading, however, because much of this time is spent preparing solutions and gathering together equipment. Once the solutions and equipment are in place, the sampling rate may differ substantially from method to method. Additionally, some methods are more easily automated. This is a significant factor in selecting a method for a laboratory that handles a high volume of samples. The cost of an analysis depends on many factors, including the cost of equipment and reagents the cost of hiring analysts, and the number of samples that can be processed per hour. In general, methods relying on instruments cost more per sample than other methods. Section 3D.8 Making the final choice Unfortunately, the design criteria discussed in this section are not mutually independent. Working with smaller samples or improving selectivity often comes at the expense of precision. Minimizing cost and analysis time may decrease accuracy. Selecting a method requires carefully balancing the design criteria. Usually, the most important design criterion is accuracy, and the best method is the one giving the most accurate result. When the need for results is urgent, as is often the case in clinical labs, analysis time may become the critical factor. In some cases it is the sample's properties that determine the best method. A sample with a complex matrix, for example, may require a method with excellent selectivity to avoid interferences. Samples in which the analyte is present at a trace or ultra trace concentration usually require a concentration method. If the quantity of sample is limited, then the method must not require a large amount of sample. Determining the concentration of lead in drinking water requires a method that can detect lead at the parts per billion concentration level. Selectivity is important because other metal ions are present at significantly higher concentrations. A method using graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopy is a common choice for determining lead in drinking water because it meets these specifications. The same method is also useful for determining lead in blood, where its ability to detect low concentrations of lead using a few microliters of sample are important considerations.